The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus says, For I tell you that unless your, your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you certainly will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, which means, you fool, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you may recall that a few weeks ago I said that I am incredibly reluctant to talk about myself and my own experiences in preaching, unless, of course, it is in the context of showing how God has proven me wrong and where he has set me straight. This week certainly has, has been one particular case in point. This week has been kind of a time of struggle for me, especially as I have been struggling with the text, which, uh, which Amber read earlier, and we, and we also just heard from the Gospel of Jesus. I have been doing a lot of struggling about what things were like for me when I first started out in ministry. And what I recall is that when I, was, when I first started out as a pastor, I found out how easy it was to get distracted. Even more specifically, I found out how easy it was to get distracted by anger and conflict. Some of you might recall what all was going on, um, what all was going on in the wider church back in those days. But I found it really easy, especially as a much younger pastor, to get involved, um, to, to get involved and get sucked into the anger and the conflict that had been going on. And as a result, I found myself, I, I now realize, I now realize with several years of hindsight how distracted I really was, especially by being distracted from preaching what the true message has been all along and being distracted but from what the true purpose of the church is. For Jesus certainly warns us in today's gospel reading that it is easy for us to get involved, it is easy for us to get involved in anger. And yet what Jesus wants for us, especially as the family of God, is not to be angry, but instead to seek unity and reconciliation. When we are able to be united and reconciled with each other, and when we are able to focus on Jesus, rather then fall into any sort of distractions. Then we are able to communicate our message clearly. As I told the children just a few moments ago, when our focus is on Jesus, everything is better. But when we take our focus off of Jesus, then things really get worse. And it is easy for us to fall into distraction. It is easy for us to lose focus of Jesus, on Jesus and to lose what our purpose truly is. And, most of all, to lose sight of what our message really is. And what is our message? As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.11, For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Our purpose is to listen to the Holy Spirit. Once again, it is easy to get distracted from listening to the Holy Spirit. Yet that is our purpose, to listen 
to the Holy Spirit, to listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us, and to hear what the Holy Spirit tells us, especially as he calls us out of distraction, as he points out distractions to us and turns us away, calls us away from distractions, and, 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 and instead turns us to what our true purpose is once again. And our true purpose is to proclaim our true message, which is the message of the cross. As we talked about last week, the message of the cross simply being Jesus died on the cross for us. Anything else, anything else that we might want to add on to it, or any, or any way in which we may use or even misuse this message is simply a distraction. But the message is still clear. Jesus died on the cross for us. And because Jesus died on the cross for us, we lay aside and we let die everything that belongs to our old nature, especially anger, division, and opposition. In doing so, we also live in response to what Jesus has done for us. We live in response to what Jesus has done for us by following God's commandments. As God, speaking through Moses, reminds us in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 20, that you may, <coughs> that you may love the Lord your God, and that you may obey his voice, and that you may hold to him, for he is your life. Once again, it is easy for us to be distracted, and it is easy for us to listen to other voices than God's. It is also easy for us to get, to get distracted by confusing other voices we may hear with the voice of God, which again is why we are to continually pray to be able to listen to the Holy Spirit and pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to us clearly and without any confusion. God also warns his people to stay away from the worship of idols, to stay away from the worship of false gods, and again, which again are anything that is a distraction. What distractions are keeping you from hearing the voice of God? And most of all, what distractions are keeping you from seeing what God is doing? What distractions are keeping you from seeing what God is doing in your life and in the lives of others? One other thing that I found, that I found early on in ministry is that in being distracted, especially in being distracted by conflict, it is very easy to lose sight of what God really is doing especially since God might be working in ways, he might be working in people, he might even be working in groups, in ways that we do not expect, and in ways that, certain, that certainly we may not, um, cer certainly in ways that we do not expect, because, these, be, because frequently these are, ways that, these are ways that are the opposite of how we think God would act and how, and how he would do things. But once again, it is easy for us to be distracted from seeing what God is really doing. And so we are to pray every day for the Holy Spirit's guidance and wisdom, for the Holy Spirit to show us clearly what God is doing and for the Holy Spirit to remove all distractions that keep us from seeing what God is doing and hearing what he is saying. Perhaps right now, we are dealing with some sort of distraction. As I said, this past week has been a bit of a time of personal, uh, of personal struggle for me where I found it really easy to get distracted 
from meditating, from meditating on God's word in preparation for the sermon. Various other struggles. Many of us are probably facing various other struggles that are keeping us from listening to what God is saying, especially what God is saying in his word. And what are those distractions? Perhaps they are fears, anxieties. Perhaps they are wondering about what is going to be happening in the next hour or what's going to be happening the next day. Perhaps these distractions are even sicknesses or illnesses. Perhaps these distractions are any kind of worry about something we lack that we, that we wonder if God is going to provide. Whatever these distractions are, we are to ask for the Holy Spirit's help in casting them aside. To ask for the Holy Spirit's help in casting aside all distractions and everything that keeps us from hearing what God is saying and seeing what he is doing. And instead, to be able to focus and focus clearly on what God is doing. We are also to ask for the Holy Spirit's help to live in response to what Jesus has done for us on the cross, to live in response to the love he has shown us by walking in the law of love. Walking in the law of love, <clears throat> in the law of love is actually precisely what Jesus is telling us in today's gospel reading. He is not setting down new rules, but instead he is reminding us that the entire spirit of the law, the entire spirit of the commandments, the law which, which once again, God through Moses encourages us to obey, the entire spirit of the law is summed up in love. Love for God, love for other people, love for ourselves. And so in response to what Jesus has done for us, we are to walk in the law of love. To also remove all other distractions that would keep us from loving others as God has loved us. To remove all prejudices that would keep us from loving others as God has loved us. And that would keep us from seeing others as God sees them. To remove all prejudices that would keep us from seeing what God is doing in the lives of others and how we may be able to help God in carrying out what he is doing in the lives of others. This is what it means to walk in the law of love, to ask for the Holy Spirit's help, to help us see how we may love others the way God loves us. And once again, as Jesus encourages us, we are to seek unity and reconciliation with others. If any of us still have any kind of anger or resentment towards others, we are to make sure that we settle it in the, way, um, in the, best, in the best way possible. If any of us still harbor any anger, resentment, or any kind of grudges, we are to make peace, forgive those who have wronged us, apologize where necessary, to once again seek unity and reconciliation. Because once again, it is when we, it is when we are at peace, it is when we are at peace within ourselves and when we are at peace with each other that we are able to focus on Jesus and communicate the message of the cross clearly. Dietrich Bonhoeffer says that judging others makes us blind, whereas love is illuminating. By judging others, we blind ourselves to our own evil and the grace which others are just as entitled as we are. In other words, if we focus on anger, if we focus on resentment, then we are unable to see others how God sees them. 
if we focus on anger and resentment, then we are unable to see that others are, are just in need of grace, forgiveness, and love just as much as we are. If we focus on anger and resentment, then we are unable to see others as being equal to us, equally loved and treasured by God. Walking in the way of love, therefore, means that we cast aside everything that causes us to think that we are in some way better or superior to anyone else, that we have a right to be angry or resentful towards others, that we have a right to judge others. And instead, walking in the law of love means recognizing others as being equal to us, equally loved by God. Let us therefore cast aside all distractions, cast aside everything that would keep us from walking in the law of love, from seeing and hearing clearly what God is doing for us and others. Let us continue to walk in obedience to God's commandments by loving others as we have been loved, and in unity and in reconciliation with others and with each other. Let us proclaim the message of Jesus clearly, the message that Jesus loves us. He calls us to walk in love. Therefore, let us walk in love. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.